It's showtime. Hello and welcome to Musical Lyrical Lingo. We're your hosts, Tim and LJ. Today and every week we will be discussing musicals, but specifically what they taught us. Hello. I'm laughing because Timothy's so worried about being in the shot. Yeah, I was from... like, am I in the shot? Because the last ta- the last video I looked at, um, I had half my face cut off. You I would know. have thought I was doing Phantom or something. <laughs> <laughs> but it makes me laugh that you're oh we doing video oh no i'm not up for that and now I, like before we start recording am i in that shot <laughs> just checking you'll only do it once to me like um you don't understand the amount of time and preparation i put in to now coming to record podcasts oh, okay. i mean i moisturize and everything <laughs> um just to be sure i've got a particular glow so whenever you're cut off, you're raging. My, absolutely. I mean, I got my hair cut and my beard trimmed this week for the very occasion. Did you go to your I I did. Say yeah. butchers, but that's not what I, I meant. I didn't go to the butcher. No, there's no one butcher in me, thank you. Um, yes, no, I did go to the barbers, yes. Mm. A, wee, a wee skin fade because I'm a millennial and like not, I'm pretending I'm not in my 40s. You're not in your 40s. You're close so. to you. Close to you. Um, yeah, how are you? I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. I know that, that was really weird when I said that. I'm good. Like, I didn't know how to say the word. Good? Yeah. I'm good. <laughs> Just normally, maybe? Good. Hello. I'm loving these mics, I have to say. We're crystal clear, aren't we? Yeah. Let's hope that others think we're crystal clear. Is that one of those real... Um, sh- sorry, anyone who can't see, watch the video. Um, no, uh... <laughs> Just sipping out of those mugs, you know those big, massive, oversized Stanley. monstrosity. I, I wasn't going to mention the name in case we get sued. Uh, is that a real one? No. Oh, okay. So I had had one which was better, which I thought was better. My daughter stole it on me, so I then had to go and get this. The problem is, and nobody make the mistake, is don't do a two-hour drive and drink a full bottle of it and then not have a toilet anywhere near you. It's it's, it's not good. You no. Know, do you not break your arm every time you have to go and lift it up? No, it's actually really well designed. It looks like a dumbbell. Well, I don't need to go to the gym then. Fair enough. Okay, interesting. <laughs> how's how's things going? Things are going good. I feel like I've been involved in a lot of musical theatre, listening to loads. Um, I think because I'm in the car more, uh, I've got Shuffle on my Spotify. Yeah. So I'm listening to loads of different musicals and I just feel like the springtime and everything is just making me want to be at the theatre every single night. That's so weird though, because like the spring is when the evenings are starting to lighten up, aren't they? You want to go into a dark and room. Dark <laughs> that That's says an awful lot about room. your personality. <laughs> <laughs> Surely the winter months are when you want to lock yourself away in the theatre? No. Um, I don't know, maybe it's because I actually feel better now after being sick for so That's long. So that true. now I'm like, yes, let's go and do stuff. A five, six, seven, eight. <laughs> dun, dun, dun. Very good. Well, I'm glad you're feeling I much know. better. Uh, what about you? Yeah, good. Just living on a constant feeling of exhaustion. I know, you have a lot on. Like we all do, don't we? That's life. How are you, Aaron? Very well, thank you. Good. Awesome. Are you planning on reading that, um, that IQ book? During this episode. This book, here, this book here? Yeah. QI. <laughs> QI book of general ignorance. <laughs> Rather apt tonight, Timothy. Okay, hey, I was... Put that to the camera. <laughs> That's a good start. I was reading it upside down. Okay. What, it I'll says it IQ to just... me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, rude. <laughs> okay, what do you know about musical theatre? Just saying. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, don't you finish that. He was going to be really rude there and say probably more than you. Don't think so, no. somehow. Absolutely That's why not. they pay me the big bucks <laughs> and you're hitting the buttons. Okay. <laughs> Shall we move on to this week's episode before I get fired? Yeah. Do you have any exciting news for us? Oh, yeah. Do you want some theatre news? Always. Bit raging about this one, to be quite honest with you. Oh, why? Yeah. It was uh, announced... It wasn't this week, it was last week actually, that there is going to be a new Mary Poppins UK and Ireland tour. 
I know, but they've already cast Barbie. And, I mean, not only have they already cast it, but they went as far as casting the people that they cast recently in the most recent Australian cast of Mary Poppins to play uh, Mary Poppins and Bert, Stephanie Jones and Jack Chambers, whoever the hell Jack Chambers is. <laughs> He's new to me, well. Um, but, I mean, had someone right in their doorstep of Ireland, you know, UK and Ireland tour. No need to... I mean, I think probably Jack Chambers is maybe British and they took him over to Australia to do the Australian version, I think. I don't think they're both Australian. I don't oh. really know. I was so annoyed by the so news disgusted? that I didn't even bother researching who the heck they were. But oh. like, what is this? I, do you know what it is? What? Ageist. Oh, okay. They're going... We're going there. A 30 something is too old to play um, Bert and I disagree. I disagree too. I'm, I'm so, I'm so annoyed. Oh, no. So I won't be going to see it. You will. I will, we yeah. Will. It we opens in November uh, this year at the Bristol Hippodrome. And then it's coming to Dublin on the 11th of December, Edinburgh the 22nd of January, Plymouth the 26th of February, Manchester the 9th of April. And further venues are to be confirmed. Yeah, love it. Um, I am currently in discussions oh with um the producers are you yeah in your dreams no 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 there's definitely a need for for an alternate you know there's no way he's going to be able to do eight shows a week so um watch this space folks just saying uh, all i'll say is uh-huh. i've got the tap shoes out of the cupboard and I have dust them off good you're just preparing and i'm doing wee ankle rolls in the evenings you know <laughs> 20 to the right, 20 to the left, 20 point and flexes, uh, uh, you know, r- rising up onto my toes. And have you started to <clears throat> uh, do things upside down yet? Just to try and get ready for that section? Not really, because as you know, I'm not very good with upside down, including reading. Yeah. Aaron's book, Upside Down. Um, but so that's... maybe that's what you should be working on rather than the wee ankle rolls? Well, I, I don't want to break my ankles, so I think I start with the ankles and work my, work my way up. Do you know okay. what I mean? It'll be the hips next and the lower back, and then we'll get to then we'll get to suspending myself upside down. Okay. Well, can we video, video that? Because I think that that would be really of course. Why are you laughing? <laughs> oh my um, goodness! People out there haven't seen a bird until they've seen my bird. They said I haven't seen a bird. I haven't seen a bird. But you've never done a part. Thanks so, for rubbing that in, Lauren. Okay. Jeez, you know who your friends are, don't you? <laughs> I just, I really am I'm certain to worry that, you know, you need to be brought down to earth. You've been holding that Mary Poppins Oh, I'm umbrella. very much on the earth. I haven't been um, wired up yet to go dancing upside down. <laughs> that'll, that'll come come tech rehearsals. That's a bit early for that. I have oh. well and surely got my two feet on, on the Imagine. F- but you know what? I kind of feel like you're not taking this seriously, oh, no. oh, this, yeah. this opportunity that could be coming my way. So let's move on really quickly okay. to this week's um, musical. I'm a bit concerned. Why are you concerned? Because there's a lot of um, words that could be mispronounced <laughs> this week. And I did a total Lauren last week and I'm, I'm a wee bit living on my nerves this week because there's a lot of them. There, there are a lot. There. Yeah, are you concerned too? I am concerned. This could be an absolute disaster. It, yeah, it could. Uh, um, and I don't have very much written down. Oh, somebody hasn't done her no, um, research this week. And I need to explain. So Aaron, this, <laughs> where's that notebook? I hope you're jotting that down. Just saying, I have several, several pages of notes. You have. I also have done it again. I skipped two pages by accident. I it know. it kills my happiness. So just, you know, throughout the episode, if you hear me let out a scream like, oh. or a roar <laughs> out of context, it's because I've got to the page that I missed out by accident. Yeah, if you could see our notebooks, mine is all over the place, left, right and centre, because that's how my brain works in Timothy. It's very neat and there's a section and I just have, that's probably why I can't even read Oh God, writing. I've got headings and everything. I know, I don't. I just have like... A I mean, you probably a wouldn't realise that I am so prepared, <laughs> but I really am. <laughs> it just doesn't sometimes come, a, doesn't come always, across. Yeah. yeah. Okay, I just get excited and carried away. Well, this week we were discussing the Powerhouse Andrew Lloyd Webber musical, Evita. Yes, we were. 
we were. Why are we, we talking are. like we've done it in the past? <laughs> you are. said this week we were no, discussing. I you did. Right, this week we will be discussing. <laughs> <sighs> okay. Hope you're taking this down. Uh, yes, par the par. What? How do you describe it? The par house. Yeah. Yeah, I hear you. It is no. I, Disclaimer before we start. You um, can't say the words. No, I can't say the words. I do not like this musical. <gasps> I This musical, remember I've spoke about in previous episodes, there are a number of musicals which make me feel uneasy. This is one of them. What? Yeah. Oh, folks, so said, you're in for a treat because any time we have like different opinions on a musical, it's always a scorcher of a ep- episode. So I'm not going to list all the different musicals which make me feel uneasy because I feel like it's a nice little surprise, surprise clearly, because I am absolutely knocked off my chair here. So I started doing my research for Avida and her. If anybody has watched Friends, they will understand this reference. I felt like I needed to put my book in the freezer. So I, it makes me feel really uneasy. I don't like the story. I don't particularly like death. I don't like when people die young. I just don't like it. And I, the music in this freaks me out. It really, it really upsets me, this musical. You're absolutely insane. I know, but there's some songs which are my favourite songs which come from this musical. The musical, absolutely, <laughs> the music absolutely freaks me out, but it has some of my favourite musical theatre songs. Folks, welcome to the podcast. You need to do one on your own. Like, you need to do a podcast, like, on the side. She needs to do a podcast for your psychiatrist. I don't like that. I don't like when people die young. That's unusual. Everyone else does. Hmm. Wow. No, so when you when you describe this as a powerhouse of a musical, that that was somebody else's words then. No, 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 no. I appreciate like the music. I appreciate this this story and what Tim Rice and Andrew Lloyd Webber did together. But I could not watch this musical. Like, I have watched this musical. Yeah. I've seen the performance of it. I've seen the, the movie. I could not watch this, but I have watched it. <laughs> I know, yeah. I'm, I'm contradicting myself. I, think. <clears throat> I could not watch this musical and then go to bed. I would have to go and do something really fun or watch some sort of Disney movie afterwards. Even if well, that's I listen- when you put your wedding dress on, stand at the top of the stairs and do your rendition of <laughs> Don't Cry For Me, Argentina. No, that's I- what I'd do. This is why I don't watch scary movies either, because it gives me the same feeling. I <laughs> need to feel warm, happy and fuzzy. Okay. I just, I don't leave the theatre feeling warm, fu- fuzzy, fuzzy. Fair. Like this, this musical definitely takes you on a journey and it's not like all puppy dogs and roses. No. And also Eva Peron was not a very nice woman. Yeah. It's so, but like, it's so... That's why I kind of go, oh, it's so well written. Because personally, at times you're like really written for. And then other times you're like, you are an absolutely terrible person. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Like for me, there's like, it's like maybe not half and half, but there's an endearing quality to her within the show at times. That then when she is dying at the end, you are a bit like, oh, that's really sad. Well, yeah, I think you would be psychotic if whenever somebody was dying, you're like, oh, good riddance. Well, sometimes if they're a really hateful person, you're like, fair do, see you later. Bye. Really? Even then? Well, no. No, I mean. Does that make me a terrible person? I don't wish death on it. Oh, God, we're going (laughs) deep here, folks. I don't wish death on anybody. But like sometimes I maybe wouldn't have as strong a feeling to, to it happening. Like if when a they're body dies in a Bond movie, you like that? Eh? Yeah. See you later. The yeah. And mm. some uh, can you watch Bond movies then? Because some of those are a wee bit like the the death scenes are can be quite I've interesting. I've probably watched two Bond movies in my entire life. Interesting. Well, clearly you're not committed to the cause because you've got a page of notes and you put your book into the freezer. I know. So 
Anyway, well, do you know what? I'll do the background this week then because okay. I don't want you to shortchange it. Um, so, Evita is <laughs> a musical by uh, music by Andrew Lloyd Webber and lyrics by Tim Rice, and it concentrates on the life of Argentine political leader Eva Perón, the second wife of the Argentinian president Juan 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 Juan, Juan. Perón. You see, I would have gone Juan. I know. Yeah, I know. Juan Juan. Juan. Peran, uh, Peran, Peran. <laughs> the story follows Evita's early life, rise to power, charity work, and then, as we've just mentioned, her uh, untimely death. Um, one of history's most controversial women. Yes. And uh, which I didn't know about until mm. properly researching. Yeah, Evita proved to be the final major collaboration between Andrew Lloyd Webber and Tim Rice, having already collabed with each other on Joseph and Jesus Christ Superstar. It was actually the young lyricist Tim Wright. Tim Wright or Tim Wright, Rice? Tim Rice that came up with the, the idea of doing a musical based on Evita. Yeah, and this is the part that I didn't know. I didn't realise that this is actually a Tim Rice musical with Andrew Lloyd Webber. Yeah. Rather than an Andrew Lloyd Webber with Tim Rice. Exactly. So it was... And how uh, often does that happen? N- not very often. So he was in the car and he heard a radio programme. That's right. That was going to be talking about influential women. It, that was, this was in 1973, yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then from that, he was... Well, he travelled to Argentina. He was so taken by mm-hmm. Eva Peron that he actually even named his daughter Eva. Oh, wow. That's, yeah. that's a bit much, Tim. My goodness. I know, I know. Yeah, well, he after, you know, hearing the, the car radio programme, he did travel to Argentina in 1974 to carry out research. And he had a bit of a flash of inspiration when he was there. Because he realised that Che... Here's the next one. Is it Guevara? Mm-hmm. Yes. The famous revolutionary was also Argentinian. Right, okay. And a contemporary to the Perons. So Rice then had this idea to have Che uh, making the perfect narrator for the story of Evita. Mm -hmm. Um, And he says, quote unquote, that way I could get two icons for the price of one. Mm, Interesting. Yeah. Um, so then Tim Rice is composer collaborator Andrew Lloyd Webber. Never heard of him. <laughs> he agreed to take on the project. Now, the success of Jesus Christ Superstar that they had both had um, had was partly due to releasing like a concept album That's prior right, yeah. to the opening of the show. Mm-hmm. Um, and that spiked the interest and also generated a bit of expectation. And how interesting is that now? So mm. that's a concept album for Evita or for Jesus Christ Superstar that you're talking about. Yeah. We're sort of thinking of the same idea for Evita. Well, that's right. We mentioned it that for Bonnie and Clyde. Bonnie and, and Clyde. And also Hades, Hades Town. Hades Town. Chorus um, Line. A chorus Line, What I Did for Love. Like, yeah. how intriguing that this actually is a bit of a thing. But it doesn't musicals. happen now, isn't it? No. Weird. No, I know Hades Town is a more modern Musical. But even at that, like, no new modern musicals have brought ha, had that idea, mm-hmm. and a few of them could have used used it. To be honest, yeah. However, maybe is it that the music industry, the charts, they work completely different now. I would say that's going to have a huge part to it. So obviously, the charts, whenever we were growing up were still a big thing but they probably weren't as big as they were in the 70s and the 80s with Top of the Pops and people buying the records and really changing who was going to be number one. Do you remember that, Top of the Pops? I oh know. Um, because it was, you would have had the odd time where there was a musical theatre song in the charts and what I'm trying to think of is maybe Whistle Down the Wind or... Well, that's the last time I remember it happening. Yeah, something like something like that. I'm trying to think. Boyzone, maybe more Dis- that? Yeah, it was Boyzone but maybe more like Disney songs have, have made... The top 40. Yeah. But music and people's opinions were harder to find before social media. Yeah. So now that we have that world, then a concept album maybe isn't a way to introduce a new musical. I just think it's really interesting. No matter what they call us. Wasn't that Boy Zones? That was Boy Zones. Out of, um... Yeah. What's that 
show called Whistle, Whistle Down, Down the Wind. Wind. Yeah, there was quite a few of the, the. He did that a lot for a lot of the tracks in Whistle Down the Wind, didn't mm-hmm. they? Yeah. Bonnie Tyler did. Um, oh. Oh, no, Tired tricks and broken hearts. Oh, yes, right. Anyway, yeah, so <clears throat> that's exactly what they did. So Lloyd Webber and Tim Rice decided to repeat that um, formula mm-hmm. with Evita. A double concept al- album appeared in November uh, 1976 uh, with the release a month later of the single... Don't cry for me, Argentina. Bye. British performer Julia Covington. Oh, yeah. Oh, I didn't know that. Not the name you thought I was going to say. Absolutely not, no. And you know what? The single reached number one in the UK charts in February 1977 and sold more than one million copies, much to the surprise of Tim Rice. And he, um, one from a quote today, quote unquote, he said, who wants to buy a song about a country you've never really heard of? (laughs) Stay with us. We'll be right back. Love the catchy tunes and insightful discussions on musical lyrical lingo? Why would you not? Now you can reap your fandom. Ooh, we've got fans. And show off your love of all things musical theatre with our exclusive merchandise. Ooh. From comfy tees. T-shirts. Mugs to stylish tote bags. We have something for every fan. Our designs are inspired by the show's iconic things. Because we are so iconic. And featured playful quotes. Alpha, ba, And graphics that will have you humming along. I will never work again. <laughs> wherever you go. <laughs> so head over to our merch store now and start shopping. Spend your money, people. And don't forget to share your pics on our social media using hashtag podcast musical lyrics lingo merch we love to see our fans rocking our gear yes we do happy shopping (laughs) isn't it funny how sometimes just one song can really take off and people just like go crazy over it yeah because that don't cry for me argentina i would say if you stopped a hundred people in the street it would surprise you the number of people that have heard of it who probably are not musical theatre fans. Yeah, but well, because there's there's still going to be a lot of them about that mm-hmm. were about when it yeah, went, ended it up was. in the charts. Mm-hmm. Yeah, um, and I think that then uh, helped attract lots of other people to the project. Do you know what I mean? Um, American director Hal Prince, he was responsible for a number of Broadway hits, including Cabaret and A Little Night Music. Mm-hmm. He was brought on board Um as the director and the lead role went to an actress and singer that we've never heard of before. <laughs> Our very own EP. William H. See, he's not even listening. He's reading that bloody book. <laughs> um, it's okay. You carry on there. Hope you're learning an awful lot about your IQ, QI. Um, so, yeah. So, she was brought on board to play the title role of Avita, And the role of Shay, the casting, went to... Pop star David Essex. Yes. This is the spanner in the works for me. Why? He was bloody awful. Okay. Now, obviously I never saw him live, but I certainly heard him on the the album and Mm -hmm. not okay. Um, Did you think that that was a huge part of stunt casting? Do you think that was stunt casting before stunt casting was a thing? Yeah, I think so. Do you? Yeah. Well, why else? Maybe he was just good. I remember like to do that a lot though, didn't he? Yeah. Kind of bring... Anyway, don't know. Avida was said to have been like one of the first musicals to use a, a recent political figure. Yeah, so I wanted to discuss as its this. subject. How crazy! So Avida, so sorry, it's set between 1934 and 1952. Mm-hmm. So it was what 73 whenever he heard this program. Yeah, uh, like that's only 20 years. Like that's not a huge amount of time. So the only thing I can really think of now, which would be historical, would be that other. Love and terrible musical Diana. It, no, it is terrible. <laughs> I'll give you that one. Yeah, but I mean, how like that is odd that the you know six is obviously years and years and years ago historically. Yeah, and so was Hamilton and Bonnie, Cl- Bonnie and Clyde. Okay, it was the the thirties, but it just seems like it's too close. Yeah, and Andrew Lloyd Webber does like to 
to do that, like take a political figure, because he tried this the Stephen Ward musical as well, didn't he? Based on Stephen Ward, whoever the heck he was, but nobody really knows about that musical because it had absolutely bombed. Oh, okay. Um, but yeah, he was a political figure as well, like a British political yeah. figure, and was involved in scant like some scandal. I don't know that musical. He liked at his all. women. At, uh, I know that. Oh, right. Yeah, okay. I think he was like a British politician. Oh, and was involved okay. in some. Is yeah. it water or something? Yes, I know what you're talking about now. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Look at me and my history go, history lessons. No. Go you. But I think it took Andrew Lloyd Webber a while. No, it wasn't. It was like perfume, perfume, something perfume scandal. Look oh. that up there, EP. Um, it took Andrew Lloyd <coughs> Webber a while. To come on board because he mm. thought his musical G by Jeeves, yeah, was, it was going to be the big success story. And whenever it didn't take off, then he decided to come and do Evita. Oh, Evita was going to be second best. It was, yeah. And he said, if we're looking at quotes, um, Andrew I Lohan like said, a quote. Um, he, when he was talking about Eva, yeah, on, he said, uh, the manipulation of people by a very attractive but very evil woman. Evita was the most unpleasant character he'd ever written about. Yeah, I've got that one too. And he was brave enough to put it into a program. I note. know. <laughs> but I think what shocks me more is because there's probably <laughs> there was probably still people around who knew Eva, mm-hmm, <laughs> who mm-hmm. were involved in all that, and then he's saying this. I think it's a very brave choice. Yeah, I, I think it was brave, a brave choice to do this musical. Um, it used a, a variety of musical styles from the seductive calculating rhythms of, of tango to rock and roll and pr- almost operatic stylings at time mm-hmm. to evoke a complex Argentina and its anti-heroine. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, Evita was often described simply as an opera, like Jesus Christ Superstar was a rock up opera. Mm-hmm. Um, but unlike most other musicals of its time, Evita was one of those sung through yes. musicals uh, with no linking dialogue, each song illuminating a particular scene and driving forward the story. You know, so that's a kind of... There's a lot of them out there now, there but are. of its time, it was one, it was kind of stood on its own with very few friends, yeah. you know, for that kind of style. It opened in the Prince Edward Theatre in on the 21st of June, 1987, closing on the 8th of February, 1986, my birth year, uh, after 3,176 performances, ran for eight years. Uh, this production won an Olivier Award for Best New Musical and EP won f- Elaine Page, not our EP, yeah. um, won for Best Performance in a Musical. It also received nominations for Harold Prince as director um, and David Essex for Best Performance. No, I understand yeah. why he didn't win. Um, and it was a huge hit with the audiences. It then opened in the Broadway Theatre on the 25th, 25th of September. Hmm, Wonder what's special date. about that date? <laughs> uh, 1980, uh, 1979, though, yeah. and closed on the 26th of June 1983 after 1,567 performances. Uh, Paddy Le Poem um, yeah. originated the part of Evita um, in, in Broadway, Broadway yeah. and Mandy Patinkin um, was she. Now, you know I love her, Paddy. Oh, you do. Paddy once stated, waiting to hear this for a quote. Mm-hmm. I'm going to put my best patty on here. <laughs> Alvita was my worst experience of my life. <laughs> I was screaming my way through a part that could only be have been written by a man <laughs> who hates women. And I had no support from the producers who wanted a star performance on stage uh, and treated me as an... Uh, as an unknown backstage. Now that wouldn't have gone down well with Patty. <clears throat> So great. you can tell it was like she was in the room with us. Wasn't it good? <laughs> Here's to the ladies who lunch. <laughs> Everybody laugh. That's my favourite Patty song. Um, That's from Company, not from Avida. I know it is, yeah. Uh, so she, she yeah, gave she a brave did 1,567 performances. Good for her. I know, which is she, a lot. She's kind of stepped away from Broadway now. She has. She doesn't have a great word. To say about Broadway or ALW in particular? Oh, she cannot stand him. And mm-hmm. she's not behind the door in, in letting everybody know about it. But yeah. that's why I like her. She yeah. doesn't take no nonsense. Yeah. 
Elaine Page was originally told that she would recreate her, her role yeah. in the Broadway production. However, the Actors' Equity Association refused permission for a non-American to play it. I know, I know. Very strange sometimes equity's rulings on who can play what and where and... But I think back in the day, I mean, back in the day, like that was so long ago, I think it was very strict. There was no crossover. Do you know what I mean? Like, so you were a Broadway American star. productions had American actors. Yeah. British productions had British actors. There was none of this back and forward. Now, it's much more relaxed now. It like, is. you see a, a, it working both ways. You almost see often, like, a British production, which then transfers to Broadway. A lot of the original, certainly front lineup of the casts go with it. Well, let's look at another ALW show, Sunset Boulevard, which has just finished finished yeah. its run in the Savoy. And the two leads, okay, yes, one is American. Well, no, actually, she's not even American. I don't yet. think, no, what is Nicole Scherzinger? Sure Hawaiian? I don't know. Polynesian? I'll happily look her up. Um, <clears throat> happily. She... It's good. Put that book down. The two of Do them. Job. Have uh-huh. gone over yeah. to Broadway. Is it just the 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 front two? I'm pretty sure. It's is just the max the not going as well? No. Oh, okay, cool. But yeah, no. So I think that is a lot more a done thing now. Whereas I think back in the day, it probably what well, I think they were really pushing. They were strict. Yeah, they were pushing the to see how far they could pass like, the lame page to get into Broadway. Do you okay. know what I mean? Um, I don't think it was a done thing and I, the equity stood their ground and were like, nope. <laughs> okay. But I'm glad in a way, like sad for EP, but let's be honest, she's had plenty of hits in her career. Um, she, You know, she didn't miss out hugely yeah. there. Um, it was nice for Patty to do it. Sorry, EP, did you have a confirmation? Yes, born in Hawaii, Honolulu. There you go. Okay. Um, the Broadway production was nominated for 10 Tonys, winning seven including Best Musical Score, Director for Harold Prince and Tony for both um, Paddy Lepone and Mandy Patinkin. Yeah. Evita came sixth in BBC Radio 2's listening, listeners poll of UK's number one essential musicals. So you might not like it, but it's right up there, Lauren. But like I said, I can appreciate it. Yeah. I mm. just personally don't like it. Now, what I don't appreciate is it's the 1996 film. Okay, adaptation so you're not of, a fan of it. Oh God, it's terrible. Madonna. Who? She gave it a, her best go, but no. She's... But that wasn't a. We'll just cast Madonna. Madonna asked to be cast as Eva Peron. Of course she, she did. It's Madonna. I might she, want to get sued. She had a, uh, like a real not a fascination. Well, maybe a fascination with Eva, and always wanted to. And I think she knew she was never going to be a performer on Broadway or West End. So whenever mm. she heard of the film, she thought this was her way of playing Evita. Um, so she wrote to the directors and every producers and everybody. Yeah. And then eventually, I think they got a letter from Madonna. They're not really going to say no. She also knew films pay better. Let's not be, <laughs> let's not be around the bush here. She's, it's Madonna we're talking about. Okay. I mean, she looked perfect. Yeah, oh, I think so. That performance. Oh. You think it was too hammy? Oh my goodness, yeah. Not good. Yeah. Not okay. Yeah. okay. Antonio Banderas, he was, he was decent. Yeah, I, I, I yeah, didn't, he was decent. Don't, don't I have an issue with him. And I mean, it did have the wonderful Jonathan Price yes. as Juan Peron, and he's great in everything he does. Yes. To be honest, but yeah, Madonna just if it's Avida, Avida has to be really good. Yeah. Okay. Anyway, Fair enough. sorry, that background was probably a bit longer than you expected it to be, but it's you know, fine. you've it, done your research. I so. did. Yeah. <laughs> This will be quick, though. The musical lyrical lingos, because Lauren doesn't have any. Oh, no, that's not true. I do. <laughs> I do. Go on, then. Right. So um, the first thing I learned was Requiem Aeternum Dona Evita. Well done. I'm so glad you said that, because I have that too. But I was, like, not looking forward to having to say that. And that means give Evita eternal rest. So they almost chant that, don't they? Yeah, so... I think, in my opinion, the opening of Evita is probably one of the best openings of any musical I've seen. Yeah, I'll it, give you that. Yeah. It's like, 
Wow. So it starts off in like uh, Argentinian cinema Mm -hmm. and they're watching a a film, obviously, and it stops and it announces, announces, uh, you know, I would like to inform the people of Argentina that Eva Perón, spiritual leader of the nation, entered immortality at 20, 25 hours today. And then it goes into that Requiem Avida where you've basically got like the public... um, you know, what's that, what's that called when they put out, you know, the coffin and you can come and... Morning. S- yeah, public morning. And it's just, and they sing this requiem of it, like unbelievable. Like it's really, I said, I went to say it's really cool, but it's really impactful. Yeah, Do you know is. what I mean? It's like, whoa. Yeah. And I think as well that captures what way Eva Perón had captured the nation at the time mm-hmm. like she really had created this massive cult following for herself and her husband well that's right and yeah. that is how they she was almost the leader rather than mm-hmm. than Juan. And actually eva had been awarded that title of spiritual leader of mm-hmm. the nation by the argentine uh, argentine uh, congress shortly before she died so it wasn't just you know a lyric thing mm-hmm. like it was a title that a was title bestowed that upon her, yeah. Crazy. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah, that just that gave Evita eternal rest. Mm-hmm. Um, and then rest to Evita. Yeah. 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 Also, then I just learned more about Eva Perón. Yeah. You know, I think that that was mainly what I took away from that musical the first time I was introduced to it. Uh, I don't necessarily, I know that she died age 33, but I don't realise... I suppose it's only when you're on the other side of it, you yeah. realise how young 33 is. 100%. And that she, you know, she was poor, she was Ill- illegitimate, she was ambitious. Yeah. And how um, the song, once you understand it, shows how she worked her way to the top. Yeah. yeah slept yeah. her way to the top. Yeah. You know, um, but I didn't get that probably maybe one of the first times that I I listened to it or watched Mm it um so I think it just showed the I'm gonna keep coming back to that that powerhouse that ambition that she had yeah and how she was determined to make something of her life ruthlessness yeah 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 Yeah. and I think that's a fair point you just made there there is so much in the lyrics and in the songs of the show that to listen to it you almost do need to see it yeah on stage to then piece that story of of uh, Eva Perón's, yeah. or what was her name, Eva Duarte? That's right. That? Yeah, that was mm-hmm. her her name before she then married um, Juan Perón. But you kind of need to see that to then start tying her yeah. her life together. Um, oh, what a circus that very quickly follows. Um, Requiem of Vida at the beginning of the show. It kind of helps to set that that story up right from the beginning. Mm -hmm. Um, And, you know, I've said before, that character of Shay acts as a narrator and often he sings directly to, well, he sings directly to the audience the whole way through the show. He sings about the best show in town was the crowd outside the Casa Rosada crying Eva Perón. Mm -hmm. And that Casa Rosada, um, literally, meaning pink house. Yeah. Uh, is the seat of government in Argentina and it's located in Bre- Buenos Aires. Yeah, and that, that's what I learned as well. I didn't realise. So obviously, I uh, know from Casa, from Spanish, does mean house. Oh, you're very good. I've never um, studied well, Spanish Well, neither have I, but there's a few words that Casa does always come up in. Um, uh, yeah, so I knew that that was house, but then I suppose the Rosada must, must mean pinkish as well. Yeah, you I think so, must, yeah, yeah. yeah. Just kind of thinking rose, like... You know, arrows. Um, yeah. There was a lot in that, I, I find. And throughout it, then there was like almost this um, Argentinian chorus that kept coming in. Yes. Yeah, um, here we go. Knock, uh, bolt down the hatches here as I give this a go. <laughs> Salve Regina, Mata, Misere, Cordier. Yeah, I think you did really well there. Thank you, well thank done. Thank you. I've practiced it all week. <laughs> uh, Salve Regina is a Catholic devotional hymn in Latin to the Virgin Mary. And the Latin translation is Heal, O Queen, Mother of Mercy, our life, sweetness and hope. Heal, heal, O Queen. To you we cry, exile sons of Eve. To you we sigh, groaning and weeping, O merciful, O uh, reverent one. 
So there you go. Uh, Shay sings, show business kept us alive since 14, or 17th October 1945. Yeah, I love that line. Yeah, and on the 17th, um, on that day, the 17th of October, a huge demonstration of workers in the Plaza de Mayo in Buenos Aires came together in support and to demand the release of Colonel Juan Perón, mm-hmm. who had recently been arrested by generals in charge of government. Yeah, I think that the history is very messy. and It's very messy. He was very messy. Yes. The situation was very messy. The country at that time was very messy yeah. because of because of all of it. Yeah. Um, at the end of that um, song, Oh What a Circus, mm-hmm. he sings, It's a funeral too. Um, and as I've just said, in this period, Argentina was in a fragile, delicate state. Yeah. Uh, economically and politically. Uh, Peronism. Okay. It's always serious when there's an ism put yeah. on the end of your name, isn't there? Had made the country uh, grow up. Now, he, he helped the workers. He kind of used the poor and the workers as his his get in. Yes. Yeah, as his uh, to build his army yeah. of supporters. But as referenced later in the musical, Peronism also led to the once rich Argentina becoming bankrupt. Yeah. I know. Um, so only three years after Evita's death, the Argentine military uh, bombed Buenos Aires uh, and Perón was ousted after a military coup, yeah. uh, ending his seven years in power. I know. Messy, messy, messy. Yeah, it was all very messy. And is so that using your the poor or people with, with um, less mm-hmm. was similar to another political leader that, you know, things terrible things happened yeah. so it wasn't something new that he was doing but just necessarily in that that time and that country yeah they felt like he was a savior but it was more like eva knew that that's yeah. how they would get their votes i mean we've talked about this before on the podcast you know, using, mu- and it is the premise of our podcast, I suppose, Um, like using musicals to teach a bit of history. You've got your six and stuff like that. I do think of it as a brilliant musical to teach, you know, children of, you know, political turmoil. Yeah. In, or, you know, I think it's really, it's well written. Uh-huh. Do you know what yeah. I mean? It does the job. I've mentioned it a couple of times, Buenos Aires. Yeah. Somewhere I've never been, but I would like to visit at it, some point. Do you not think it's because of that song? What's new? <laughs> Buenos <laughs> Aires. But up, but up. Um, that it make, usually it's a really big dance number, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, it's fab. Um, and really vibrant mm-hmm. and lots going on and there's like a hustle and bustle. So it kind of makes you feel like, oh, that would be a really cool yeah. city to experience we might be hugely disappointed but that's i'm not too sure that is i think i think that that is a real musical thing like okay put fair on a pedestal. enough fair a enough. bit like i feel if i go to santa fe i'm going to be disappointed you've said this before yeah because it's, it's mentioned, mentioned in, in so many musicals yeah, numerous musicals but i feel if i go to santa fe i'm going to be like what Surely i'm expecting not. like garden of eden type thing whenever yeah, i go to santa yeah. fe but Surely Santa no. Fe wouldn't be a disappointment. It's no, but I feel like... checked so much. Maybe Buenos um, Aires, may. <laughs> there's quite a bit in Buenos Aires. Mm-hmm. Um, one of the lyrics says, Beautiful town, I love you. And if I need a moment's rest... I crack there. Oh, God, don't you hit him when you crack? Um, <laughs> g- give your lover the very best. Real eider down. Yeah, and what is silence. that? silence. So, oh, the... The tunnels I went down no. on researching this. Did you use a proper dictionary, not urban yeah, dictionary? No, this no time. urban dictionary this time. <laughs> um, basically, it's talking about feathers, like eider feathers. Okay. Like I think it's a duck, as oh. such. So made from the the down, or which is feathers. feathers yeah. I didn't know that. I was like, why does it keep talking about down? What on earth's a down? Do you know what I mean? Honestly, you should see me. Um, so uh, made from the down of the female eider duck, um, considered to be the softest and the most luxurious. Oh, <laughs> here's the duck back. Yes, he did leave the room. We were boring him that much. She, she also then references Rio de la Plata, mm-hmm. Florida, Corrientes, Nieve de Julio. 
Well done. I think I made some of them up. That's to okay. Be honest. But Rio de la Plata mm-hmm. is an area of water that forms a major port in Buenos Aires. Okay. Florida or Florida Street uh-huh. uh, is a street in Buenos Aires famous for its expensive shops. Ooh. Is this all forming a picture of what yeah, Buenos Eva Aires. Yeah. Peron wants? Yes. Um, oh, no. Evan Eva Dia Corrientes. Oh, I totally made that. I've totally butchered that one, boys and girls. Uh, is a street that represents the arts and has many of the large theatres and cinemas. Okay. And then Nove de Julio Avenue yeah. is named for Argentina's Independence Day. Oh, I think I did read that, yeah. And uh-huh. fun fact, probably the best fact of this whole podcast, certainly what? coming from me, um, it's the largest avenue in the world with 12 lanes of traffic. If I could drop this mic <laughs> and I it wouldn't break, I'd be doing a mic drop right now. Mic drop. Because that's kind of a cool 12 fact. 12 lanes of traffic. Who yeah. would have thought Argentina had the biggest avenue in the world? It might not anymore. I might have completely maybe, maybe back shot then. myself on the foot. But there you go. Hmm. And that's Buenos Aires for you. I do think I'd still like to go. I and I would sing. I would be Eva, uh, Eva Duarte. What's you? <laughs> when is Aris? And do you be dancing? Like dancing between <laughs> the 12 <laughs> lanes of traffic. Just a... Oh, what is it? How she said it? Finish it. Star quality. That's how she finishes it. Something like that. Lovely. You did well there. Was he criticising our mic? Yeah, um, me. I'm mi- probably too loud. Um, on this night of a thousand stars, <laughs> on you mention this night of a thousand stars. This is a little bit of where she's sleeping to the top. It's the first one she sleeps with <laughs> in the show, and not one of many. Augustin Magaldi. Yeah. Um, and he was a singer, like a Latin singer. Mm. Uh, so I just didn't know anything about so him. So he was a actual, actually a, a real, real life, person? Yeah. Oh, I didn't think to even look that up. No, he was a real real and singer. she had her way with him? She did. Used him and abused him. He was her He was her way of getting out of where she was, yeah. wasn't it? Yeah. Because she was quite young, wasn't she? She was a teenager at this point. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So... Talking about her numerous flings, Mm -hmm. there is, I love it, one of the songs in the show is called Peron's Latest Flame. Yeah. Because he was also known for enjoying his mistresses. um, And uh, Shay sings the the shooting sticks of the upper class. Do you know what a shooting stick is? No. I, this blew my mind so a shooting stick is you know those portable foldy up chairs but also act as like a walking stick yes you would definitely have seen them yeah yeah that's called a shooting stick no way yeah taken typically taken on hunting trips hence the name oh okay so i'm a wee bit disappointed Why? because in any production i've ever seen of that i have not yet seen shooting sticks being used You've got you. You've got the uh, aristocracy. Uh-huh. The aristocracy. The, aristocrats. No, why? There we go. The aris, the aristocrats. Aris, no, do you Aristoc- keep saying it wrong, Aristoc- so I can't say it. Aristocracy. Um, you see, oh, I give. Do you know what I am turning into you? Would you see what you've done to me? <laughs> we have swapped roles. We have swapped roles this season for some rare reason. Are you just shying away from these words? Is that no. what it is? <laughs> So I'm taking one for the team. Yeah, that yeah. One. Okay, fair enough. I'll take it. Um, they, you know, they're in this and they're kind of giving off about him and his flings and the girls that yes. he has, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, but not one of the, I've seen, you know, canes and walking sticks. But not a shooting star. Haven't seen or a shooting, shooting stick. stick. Not one near. Well, they need to do Disappointing, better Disappointing, isn't it? Yeah. 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 Um, they sing, no, we wouldn't mind seeing her at Harrods, but behind the jewellery counter, not in front. I thought oh, that was a great, great put down, right? Isn't it? High rude. But I thought it was interesting that Harrods was name checked. Why? So, well, but just because we, kn- we know Harrods to be an upper class English department store. Yeah. I didn't expect Argentinas? it to be in Argentina, but there was a branch 
of Harrods oh. in Buenos Aires. Um, the branch closed in 1988 after a long cl- conflict with the owner. Oh! He's got to the page, boys and My girls. My missing page, <laughs> sorry. Um, the owner, Mohammed Al-Fayed. Mm-hmm. And also the debt of the um, British, uh, sorry, of the Harrods department store in... Britain? No, in... Argentina. Oh, right. The, okay. the, the owner, the, the people who had it. Yeah. Okay. The franchisee was it? Yeah, I think, I think so. Uh, yeah. Okay. I get you. I understand now. Should you wish to uh, cause great distress in the tidiest officer's mess, is uh-huh. another um, lyric. Yeah. In that, do you know what an officer's mess is? No, I just thought, like, what he left behind was a it, mess. Yeah, as in. I agree. The, that's what I thought it was too. Because he, he slept around so much that it was like... It was this, a mess. You know, p- poor woman, maybe were like pregnant or all mm-hmm. of that. That's what mm-hmm. I took from that line. Yep. But no. what is an officer's mess? A mess is a designated area where military personnel socialise, eat and live. Oh. I know. I didn't know that. Aaron's shaking his head. And I know, it's another one of those. Hand in his head. I said hand in his head. Nearly said it right until it plur. <laughs> Um, (laughs) (laughs) all right whatever (laughs) yeah i didn't know that either so that's a clever writing Mm -hmm. yeah Yeah, very good very good um good night and thank you hold on oh sorry they call they call her a bitch (gasps) dangerous jade Mm -hmm. at the end of the number do you know what that jade was slang for prostitute i did know that i didn't know that and i only knew that because (laughs) whenever we were coming to name our child children no and people were like well you can't call jade like jade's not a name because it's it's slang for prostitute and i don't know if many (sighs) people know that who are named jade so if you're named jade i'm so sorry (laughs) (laughs) i know right okay that's really interesting isn't it yeah I know a few Jades. I know. <laughs> but it's slang for prostitute. So imagine going to like another country where that's very famously, you're, you know, a prostitute slang. Word. I've also heard stories of um, people not wanting to call certain names because they were the names of the prostitutes that would have, would have hung around the Albert <laughs> Flock in Belfast. I'm like, oh, right, okay. <laughs> <laughs> didn't really know how to continue with that conversation so I moved it on really quickly I was like we're, we're not going to go down that route <laughs> anyway sorry what was your next musical uh, language good you night and say? thank you um, Sack Carbolic is mentioned yeah but I I couldn't understand what that was and I was hoping that maybe you had I didn't pick up yeah. on that no I will now go away and look at it well, and let whenever you know. I looked it up Sack Carbolic is actually a it's a band now Oh, so, but that's all I, I think, could find. I think EP, not a lame page. Oh. Mind I just uh, have you um, find what something it is? else? Oh, no, it's just something. Jade was first used to describe a broken down horse in Middle English. Oh, so, so it were, really isn't a great name. So if you were referring to a prostitute as a Jade, you, it would be a worn out prostitute. Oh, no, even worse. Oh, dear. <laughs> not, a one, not a fresh one. No. <laughs> <laughs> not a fresh one. <laughs> <laughs> Shall we move on really quickly to yeah. Rainbow High? Yeah, go for okay. it. Love it. So Rainbow High is kind of um so Eva is now with Juan Peron yeah. and it's like she's wanting to re image herself, do you know what I mean? And she's taking re-image on Re image herself, reimagine. Okay. But like her image, re-brand. like rebrand, re-brand. yeah. Rebrand just, herself, okay, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Like make her the star that she wants to be. Yes, you know rather I mean? than an oh, yeah. illegitimate sleeping her right at the top. Jaded whore. Yes. Um, <laughs> 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 <Not personal. laughs> but she was fresh. <laughs> By the time she got to Peron. Oh, Lordy Days is awful. Um, so she sings about a, quite a few different people. She sings, so Marky Avell me. Mm-hmm. Make an Argentine rose. So Marky Avell. <laughs> Yeah. Do you know who that is? No. It's b- and I thought this was all about like, you know, designers and stuff. So when I first heard this, I was like, oh, she's taught because she's taught sings about Dior. Yes. Um, so I just thought, oh, Marky Avell must be another 
like fashion designer because I obviously am not into my fashion. I wouldn't know. But it's actually Niccolo Marchiavelli, who was an Italian diplomat. Well done. Uh, what well done. what well have done. I done? Machiavelli. <laughs> what did I say? Marchio is Machiavelli, as in Machiavellian. He's the, the author of The, the Prince, isn't it? About, yes. Uh, Cesare Borgia. Uh huh. That. Yeah. yeah. So yes, he's an author, a philosopher, historian. He is the father, apparently, of the modern political theory. As Aaron has just said, he was the author of *The Prince*, a book about how one can obtain political power. Yeah, apparently, they used Cesare Borgia as the that's he used as his muse for that. Huh? He was the illegitimate child of Pope Alexander the Sixth. Oh my god, like I just, do you know like when you like so, feel your IQ just going <laughs> beep, yeah. beep, 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 beep. Like, I know Aaron I, does that to me. My smartness is going down, like, like gushing <laughs> out of my, like sitting opposite Aaron. It was just one of those random things. You're so happened. clever though. He is, it's ridiculous. You know, That's it's why you read books like that and I can't read. <laughs> She sings, on my desk, commissario. Oh, I had it. On my desk, commissarios, expect me to outshine the enemy. Mm-hmm. The ar- aristocracy I want is a bank mm-hmm. You see, I'm much better at playing Evita. Yeah, you are. You're, yeah. So desk commissar- <laughs> des commissados yes. were Peron's main demographics and supporters, the poor working yes, class. Yes, the poor, yeah. And the word literally means shirtless ones. Yeah. Did you know that? Yeah, did I, I did know that. From your research or just you knew it? No, I, I, I think I knew it from my research, but I think it's looking at one of those words. It's almost like, like desperados. I just knew that it meant That's her. two yeah. episodes you've mentioned desperado. I know, isn't that so weird? <laughs> okay, clearly I'm the only thick one in the room. No, you're not. Definitely um, not. I'm the saviour, that's what they call me, so Lauren Bacall me. Oh, I was going to sing that bit. Do it, go. So Lauren Bacall me, which is here I'm named after. Who did it better, folks? There's a you. poll. That's a poll for socials. I know. But uh, that's you who I'm named that after, you Lauren better... Bacall. Are you? Yeah. Seriously? Yeah. Never. Yeah. You're lying. I'm not lying whenever I forced my mum to tell me well who am I named after she was like okay Lauren Bacall oh here Lauren she probably did just pick the name just to shut me up but uh, that's what I go around and tell people because <laughs> Lauren Bacall was an American film actress during the 1940s who was known for her sex appeal that's why it's so you, me so your mum named you after an actress who was known for her sex appeal so yeah <laughs> <laughs> I think we're going to have to pause the episode. I need time to recover from that one. <coughs> did <coughs> Did you have any from um, Rainbow High or Rainbow Tour? No. Can I do my Rainbow Tour the ones? Go then? For it. Just because yep. we're doing an order, or have you got no, one no, no? Go that? for it because I think I've just got um, one more. Okay. So, so Rainbow Tour is where. Um, Eva Perron then went on a tour, a world tour. Yes. Basically visiting different um, countries. And as the tour continues, the the popularity decreases and she meets many a, a leader from various different countries who do not like her. Yes. Um, and she's like, what? They she, do not like me? She felt like this was a, this was going to increase her stardom. Oh, sorry, my mic. That she was going. This was going to increase her stardom, but it actually ended up having a worse impact yeah. in their reign. Is that right? Yeah. Well, yeah, and it was like to- because I think maybe I'm wrong. I wasn't there at the time. Oh. Um, but I think at the beginning they did like her. Yes. Like they were like, oh my goodness, like she was a bit of hope. Yeah, and then I think she got carried away, didn't she? And their ideals, I think, maybe changed and. How they both carried themselves, her and her husband, then it it tipped, didn't it? And I think they the graced popularity. the palms of the wrong people yeah. and they were the ones that helped them rise to power. So then they had to continue. You know, I, I've i read a lot where their charity work wasn't actually charity work. It was a lot of a front. Yeah. You know, so they probably weren't doing everything above board. Yeah. 
True. Um, Shay sings about the quit Peron mm-hmm. to Mussolini. Did I say that right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, can't think why. And Benito. Yeah. 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 Benito, Benito Mussolini, Mussolini was an Italian uh, politician who established a dictatorship following uh, the March of Rome in October 1922. Well done. Thank you. Uh, Peron admired him, Mussolini. Wow. And the two men kind of shared the same similarities. They both had a secret police force. Yes. And were known for their intimidation, organised violence and wrongful imprisonment of c- citizens. Uh, having rid themselves of Mussolini in 1943, uh, Eva visited in 1947. It would make sense for a country to dislike the Perons that reminded them uh, and also the fact that they idolised a dictator whom they had overthrown four years prior and was executed two years uh, prior to Ava's tour. Yeah, so I remember this is one of the times where musicals helped me in class because I did, not very successfully, but I did just GCSE and A-level history. Um, And I know. (laughs) <laughs> uh, well, it was okay at GCSE history, but we're not, not here A to level. shame. We're not here to shame. And there, we did learn about Mussolini and yeah. Hitler, and, and um, it was all twentieth century um, history. And they mentioned Peron, and I was like, "Huh, Ooh. I wonder, is that like Eva Peron?" Not realizing it was, I was like, "Oh, I was able so I, because of the musical." Then I was able to ha- felt like I had a bit of a connection or an understanding of who that was. Is that when you got up onto the tables and started singing your best? I did, uh, um, Eva. I did. It's oh wow! Oh. So, um, Aaron's just put up some very brutal pictures of um, some of Mussolini's um, doings. That's awful. Oh, that was Mussolini. No, that was him. Mussolini himself. Oh, what, that was him that himself? Was the yeah, the, yeah, oh, the, yeah, upside the, down? Yeah. yeah Holy yeah. moly. Right, it's okay. So, yeah, just definitely. There you go. Excellent. Did you have anything else there? Um, Things aren't all that bad. She met with the Pope. She got a pap- papal, is that papal? Papal, papal uh, decoration and a kindly word. So the Pope was nice to her yeah. um, and that uh, papal decora- decoration um, she was given a silver rosary breeds with mother of pearl oh very fancy mm-hmm. very fancy yeah. well my last one then is um, I learned about Attila Hun yeah so I didn't know who that was and he was the ruler of Huns uh, from 434 and then I was like who were the Huns so the Huns were nomadic people But they did raids in the Roman Empire. Because sometimes Huns would be used as a slang word. Yeah, yeah. Um, So, yeah, it does. It mentions like Mussolini and an awful lot of like other dictators. But at the time, whenever I was you just probably didn't realize that that was Andrew Weber and Tim Rice's way of maybe putting a mirror up against the Perons to show that they were in and amongst and they were a bit of dictators. Because I actually think the musical, maybe because they didn't have time within the musical to go into it all, mm. but you don't see the ruthlessness of him. No. Do you know what I mean? I know because it's called a Vida and it, it, yeah. you know, the about- focus is on. But I don't think from the musical you get just how brutal and horrific he was. Yeah, though I feel like in the movie, um, yes. yeah, you do. Jonathan Price yeah, was yeah, able to yeah, do that. yeah. So you did, it was almost done like behind closed doors, yeah, yeah. a bit like the room mm. where it happened. You know, you weren't too sure, but you knew something was going on there. Mm. Um, and it was maybe something you didn't want to, you, you know, really didn't want to know what was going on. Um, I suppose we've, we've slagged off Eva um, an awful lot, but I did want to mention, especially because we had International Women's Day this yeah. week. Um, oh, that was well-timed, week. wasn't it? She For was instrumental. <laughs> In passing a law that actually gave women the right to vote in Argentina in 1947. Like in 1947, before yeah. women were allowed to vote in Argentina. Come on. Yeah. Crazy. Come on. But anyway. um, I, So, do you remember in last episode, take it that's all your musical air, Kalingus? It is, yeah. So last episode, I kind of looked at you a little bit weird. Mm-hmm. Because yeah, I, I mean, you, you look at me weird often, to be <laughs> fair. But I thought that you were in my head. And I was like, oh. I'm always in your head. Yes. So. Obviously, I spoke at the beginning about how this musical 
frightens me a little Gives bit. Gives you the creeps. But I'm about to make a revelation. See if Aaron had to play one role in musical theatre. I think he would make a really good Shay. Oh, I thought you were about to say make a really good Ava Baron. I was like, come no. on, folks. Yeah. Yes. That's him. Can you see mm-hmm. it? 100%. So I'm like, part of me also wants to put on a production. <laughs> I know, I'm really joking. It's only for the purpose that I could play Che Guevara. But actually. you not think that he would have, do you know, like, he would, like, look at you the way Che does? Did you see um, Ricky? He looks at us often. I know. Like that, to be fair. Him. Yeah. I quite, I thought Ricky Martin's performance was, wasn't bad. I, I only thought they couldn't sing it. Well, I didn't think it was bad. Yeah. I didn't think it was bad. It was good casting. Yeah. If, if slightly stunt. Mm. Um, but yeah, I thought, so I thought you were in my head whenever you mentioned about... In the previous episode, I thought you thought you knew that you, I was about to say that Aaron would make a yeah. really good. That's weird because I would I could see that too. I so know. maybe was it like subconsciously in my head too? Maybe wake. No. no. He wears a cap. Yeah. Does yeah. Cap. So I think you'll be yeah. all right. Thanks. And you've got the beard, so it's all good. good. But I think it's that you know the way sure. um Antonia Banderas played it? She's not coming back for you. <laughs> <laughs> wow. That was really good. It's my style of vision. <laughs> I think you could do that really well. Star is gone. <laughs> I'm flying adored. adored. And oh. that leads me into, that's one of my favourite songs ever. Is it? Oh God, that's the one I cut from the show. Really? Yeah. No, I should have about that. No. I really like it. And I do like another suitcase and another haul. You get rid of that too. See? Isn't that weird? That is know. so weird. You just mentioned the two that I'm like, mm. I like in this show, I like the really powerful ones. So when um, Ava's like giving it like okay. rice, you, you do the what's new, Potter's Aaron? Yeah. And I think it's uh, Rainbow High that she sings. He loves you. Or, um, yes. He supports you. No. He's one of you. Yeah. If not, how could he love me? That's right. I love it when she's screaming her face off. Yeah. Yeah, no, that is, that's kind of tingly. Yeah. Yeah, that's It's good. like, wow, sir. And it's awful if you're like watching a production and your Avita can't get to that screamy. But screamy, in your but face. not in a like. Screaming. Uh. Yeah. <laughs> like I just did. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Screaming with style. Scream with style yeah. and grace and power and yeah, something oh. behind the scream, I suppose. Um, yeah, that's one of my favorite bits. I do think if the actress can get. Um, don't cry for me, Argentina. Right, it's it's a dramatic highlight for me. See, I would cut it. But you see, it's hard, I think, because you stand in the one place, so mm-hmm. you have to be a proper good actress. Yeah, I think but so. I think if I've seen um, Madalena, yes, somebody, yeah, came on a UK tour and she was outstanding because she had that par mm-hmm. house in her, but she also was a phenomenal actress and she acted the pants off that don't cry for me Argentina not in a hammy way do you know what I mean like in a really truthful honest I was like wow like that it was so part you could have heard a pin drop in the Mm. the room because it was just so powerfully done by her I think that's where Madalena Alberto would that be right right? yeah Yeah, she deserves a nod I think that's where a lot of people can get a Vita wrong mm-hmm. is they feel like they need to do that don't cry for me O-T-T. Argentina well in fact I think it was more of a conversation mm. to her people mm-hmm. um, and if they rein it back actually the music's going to do most of it for them yeah. so that they can just perform lightly I, I think it is I'm thinking about this before I say it out loud okay I think it is my favourite Andrew, Andrew Lloyd Webber Avida is your favourite Andrew Lloyd Webber? I think, no, it isn't. I think so. No, it's not. Why? Joseph. No. I mean, I love Joseph. I love Joseph, but musically, I think I think Avida is, is, is up there with one of my favourites. Really? Re- yeah, it really is. No, definitely not mine. Um, yeah. It and Jesus Christ Superstar. Well, you see. Yeah. Jesus Christ is definitely. Like, don't Joseph get me wrong. Jesus I love, there. I love Joseph as a show. Like, I love mm-hmm. it. And the music's great. Very different, like it's a very different feel to it. But I think there's just something about Evita that I really, really love. Like okay. really like. I think the music's okay. insane. 
I think music is so good, it makes me feel uneasy. So that's why I just don't like it. It doesn't, I yeah. don't listen to that album and go, uh. That's in a like ra- really roundabout way, given a compliment there. It's so good that it's creepy and it puts you off. Yeah, but I think, no, but. Uh, cause, Put that on the album cover. Because they're not trying to give her a redemption story and they're not trying to make her be this put up on a pedestal and this wonderful woman. I do think they've done a really good job at going, she wasn't great. But she Andrew Lloyd Webber hated her. No, he I know. So I think that that, yeah. so therefore I'm like, oh, mm-hmm. I don't like that. I think um, Stan O's also have to go to the original Mm-hmm. Liam Page, like she was fabulous. Yeah. And uh, Paddy Lepome was also a fantastic American counterpart. Well, my dad and my granny and gramps got to see Liam Page <gasps> in the West End. Now, I, I've spoken about it before, how my dad is not a musical mm-hmm. theatre fan, but his parents um, were. And so the poor man, boy at the stage, was dragged to every single performance. And he said that is the one that he really remembers and that, hairs on his arms actually stood up whenever she was singing amazing the hairs on his arms still stand up today when he sings don't cry for me Balamina." <laughs> does that <laughs> do the the hairs on his arms stand up and he's yeah. he's doing that from i could just see him at his bay window with I his know. arms out going don't, don't cry, cry for me Balamina." no no but he says it was an unbelievable I can only imagine. So. I saw a London revival. I mean, there's no point talking about how many productions of this yeah. show there is because there's been revival after revival after revival. Uh, there was one where it was actually an Argentinian actress that was cast yes, as it was, it Evita. Was so good. Um, and then she did go on to Broadway to do mm-hmm. it again with um, Ricky Martin, as you've just said. Yeah. But in London, what was her that name? That cast album is very it's good. Fantastic, isn't it? What very was her name? Very good. I don't have it written down because, as you can tell, I've got lots Could of gaps. Could you like look up Aaron? I think was it two thousand and six London revival of Evita? Um, but I know the the Shay was played by Matt Rawl. Okay. Uh, who then went on to play Zorro in Zorro the musical. And How he, weird. And he played Martin Gear Martin Gear and Martin Gear and he's a fabulous actor. Like his his Shay's the best Shay I've ever seen. Oh, yeah. interesting. Okay. Was he it was stunning? It? That you know the money keeps rolling in. Yeah. You know the way he goes rolling and then he goes he went up, he opted up for uh, in, and like held it for like ages. He was like, Wowzer. That was a jaw on the moment, a jaw, jaw on the floor moment. Wow. Who's he going to know? He played Eva Peron. Elena Roger. Elena Roger. She was very good. She's class too. Yeah. And really authentic because that Argentinian accent, you know, was. Yes, I think that helped. It was legit. It was yeah. class. Yeah. yeah. That helped. Um, can I just correct? When did you say it was in the West End? Did you say it was the 80s? No. Are you sure? I didn't say anything okay. about the 80s. What no, it was definitely in 78, wasn't it? Are you asking me to go right back to the yeah. beginning of my notes, I all these pages? I just want to double check that you... I said that it, the, yeah. it opened... in June 1983. No, that's, that's, that's Broadway. All oh, right, I sorry. said 1978. That's okay. That's all right. I just wanted to make sure Bloody that you trying we were... to fact check me when your, your notes are <laughs> all the length of a page. <laughs> Uh, do you know what? Thank you for helping me get through that because I was actually dreading that. Oh, yeah. Yeah, only because it, it does make me feel good, but actually I enjoyed that. I felt like I learned a little bit more. I'm and glad. And I know I'm never to drag you to your production of no, Evita, please don't, so that's because okay. I would cry. That's so weird. Like, So was that the musical that you had been referring to no. in previous episodes? No, no that's still to these, come. These are going to yeah. shock. They're not going to shock you. That one did shock me, though. Totally all, did. I think they all have a similar theme. <laughs> <laughs> Quote. Um, but yeah, there's like five. So that this is definitely, you know, so we've got four more to go. Holy moly, wowzer. That Place your bet. That's a good one. Right, so we have two social um, posts that we need. 